Hey everyone and welcome back to the Warcraft news and uh, yeah wow what a week it's been um, we launched a new channel last week and it's been going fantastically I'm pretty oh, yeah, damn blown yeah, away that. by your support and yeah if you haven't heard we're doing another channel it's industry coverage with more um, original content planned okay. for the future we already have got videos out covering the Activision Blizzard Bungie saga the 15 million dollar bonus saga the breakdown of the Randy Pitchford situation and there's also some Fallout stuff and basically Basically how Bethesda have hilariously destroyed okay. their MMO economy through the special power known as being Bethesda. So it's three Ooh. to five more videos a week. So far people seem to have been really enjoying I think a different sort of take okay. from the um, most of the industry news that's out there. So a big thank you to them for supporting. I recommend checking it out. Hit up those links below. And with that, let's get into the news. So we actually have some really good news to start off with and that is communication good. from the developers. Now, I have hit Blizzard hard on this topic in the past. And I think I was and I'm right to do when that. did they communicate? Because communication is so very important. Well, okay. we've just seen Ian Hasekostas make a few forum posts that oh. explain quite a lot of what's changing with season two. Wow. And yeah, I mean, that's good. I haven't seen this before. A lot of this stuff's not intuitive. And it does that's need good. to be explained officially that's actually really if they good. want to continue their scaling heavy approach to managing okay. the life of the Great. game's progression. Previously, this would have been the job of, like, say, me and Wowhead, and we will do our guides and how you can best use all that, but seeing the game director jump into the fray to do that himself is fantastic. He also made a few follow-up posts as well, which were all good. So okay. while it's a small-ish gesture in the grand yeah, scheme of things, it amazing. absolutely is the sort of thing yeah, no, no that I'd love that's to see great. more of. Now, he actually shit. did mention how the EU mirror for wow. the post didn't go up because he was experiencing a bug in his end. And the only thing I'd say about that is, I'm kind of <laughs> You can be the game director, but you still can't get away from the bugs. Just a second, let me go ahead and read a couple of these before we get too far ahead. Uh, I, I didn't want to, like, miss a lot of this. I know people donated a few things for the conversation. I did want to just address those real quick. Uh, before we finish the rest of this somebody said I do PR for a living I think Blizzard needs to lose money to gain player competence back what I would have done is 75% go towards the prize pool until the tourney was over and then keep the toys in a shop but 10% of profit goes to next year's prize pool yeah it seems like a better idea to me I don't know what the percentage is going to be yet so I don't think we can really draw that conclusion yet but yes yeah, so I do think Blizzard needs to invest into their community and stop trying to only look at it in terms of making profit out of every single transaction and look at it after making profit and making the community better Better as a whole and then making money in the long run right it's basically the difference between short-term gains and long-term gains I think they're too focused on short-term gains and they've been hurting the integrity of the game in the long term uh, that's what I think has happened uh, Blizzard's have a respectable prize pool if they did crowd crowdfunding should be viewed as a bonus and that is ideal however because the prize pool is ship you will view crowdfunding as Blizzard deferring the cost to players you're actually right if Blizzard put out the prize pool to be a million dollars and then they also said we're going to do this other thing to where you know you have this uh 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 the toys i think it'd be better most people would be more okay with it but uh yeah you're kind of right the fact that the baseline price pool was so low people do assume that blizzard is basically offsetting the cost onto the players you're totally right uh, let's see here these nerds have no idea how business works well it, it's a lot more nuanced than that right it's like businesses make money right and so making every decision in the context of making money is not always the right the right business decision to make right i mean there are things that are that transcend money that businesses have value on right like integrity trust um brand loyalty all of these things are not necessarily something that you can put a, a dollar sign on but they're still extremely important and they're something that matter in a lot of ways in the long term more than money uh so that's what i would say And I'm surprised that he has to make the post himself. I mean, no one in that team has a higher value like for their time. So I think it would make more sense for him to just write the article and wing it off to the CM team to actually do the posting. And I wonder if they could have some sort of internal pipeline for supporting more easy developer communication such that, that would people be great. like Ian, it would be really easy to just do a post and fling it off to the CM people. Anyway, yeah, that in would short, be fucking amazing. great to see, good job, and I hope they yes. do more of it. Thank you, Next, Ian. let's talk about Blizz while deciding to save Mythic players from themselves somewhat. So you see, you could actually funnel Azerite gear to one character when you were doing um, raiding, and that essentially meant that characters could earn a massive amount of Titan Residuum, which of course a lot of people would have wanted to do because it could mean they could start off on a better foot once the new raid comes out. That's yeah, of course that's very good. important for the competitive raiding types. Not that they enjoyed it that much, with many pointing out how exploitable a system it was when um, it first came out in 8.1. Well, combined with the massive AP farming... That
the Azerite system is fine. It's fine. Just because a handful of people can do community runs, who gives a fuck? If Blizzard, the, the biggest mistake that they've made is trying to cater the game to like 100 people. So just because 100 people were able to take advantage of something in a weird way, now the entire system has to change. They've also subjected themselves to the holidays may not have actually felt like much of a break. Now, this is, of course... Okay. I'm talking about the Azerite armor acquisition system after the Titanite Residium was added into the game. It's all their own doing, and uh, at the end of the day, if you're going to push everything to its utter maximum, yeah, expect things to get a bit strange. But still, TR being used like this was a little bit strange, so Blizzard have decided to make it such that you can only earn TR from DEing or scrapping Azerite gear that is meant for you. I like class. how they made it TR so, because nobody can good. pronounce Residium. Didn't come in earlier. Next, Including the move that me. will actually impact far more players. Uh, Blizzard are actually changing how emissaries and assault wrapper quests reward gear. They are now going to give you gear for either your current spec or your loot spec if you have selected one. So imagine my excitement when I got a Warforged well, weapon that was like, you know, a 380 or something like that, just to realize that, um, yeah, it was for the one spec that I don't play. Well, that's not going to happen anymore. And the it? reasoning is basically that those things are random rewards. They should take, uh, therefore, take your loot spec into account. Yeah. Regular fixed world quests, well, they don't really work that way. If they well, change when you change the spec, um, you know, it'll be a little bit um, broken. They uh, didn't do this what, before? You know, they're fixed. You know what you're getting when you go into them. Yeah, I did get so a shield. Just once. way more sensible for those, um, you know, random caches. Overall, a pretty damn what good thing. What the fuck? But next, I never even thought about the this. Clock because yes, there wow. is um, a bit of an outrage again. Once more, it's about the in-game store yeah. and indeed Blizzard's plans for it. However, this Here time, things are actually quite different. And I Here think there's a more go. reasonable element to um, most aspects yeah. um, of this debate. And it does break us out into a big industry thing. So, Blizzard okay. posted about their upcoming esports plans for the year. So far, it's all normal. But if you go to the very bottom of the article, you see something new. In a move that is actually highly similar to many industry norms, Blizzard are partially crowdfunding their prize pools for the WoW esports stuff. They plan to do this through the sale of toys in the in-game store during spring of this year, with a portion of those sales going into the prize pools of the PvP and Mythic Plus tournaments. Now, on face value, it's actually very similar to what we see done in other titles, such as Valve's yeah. Dota 2, and where its yeah, main other tournament companies has do this. for it's quite not a some big time deal. had a crowdfunded element to its prize pool. Yeah. That is a prize pool that hit almost $25 million in 2018. Now, the way that works is that 25% of sales yeah. from the International Battle Pass Wait, would go Wait, $25 million? Are y'all fucking serious? There's no way. Was it $25 million? What the fuck? Wow. How? Oh my god. That's insane. There's no... Let me look at it. Alright. Uh, Dota. Two. Prize pool. 2018. There's no way it was that much. What the fuck? Oh my god. So the base prize pool was 1.6 mil. The contributed prize pool was 23, 24, basically mil. Holy fuck, man. So if you got first place at BlizzCon, you won the same amount of money as somebody who got 16th place at Dota. How much money, let me ask you something, how much money do you think that the toys are going to get? I would say they'll probably bring in like maybe 300k to like 2 million dollars, somewhere around there. I'd say 300k to 2 million dollars. If they start bringing in a lot of money, I might compete in the MDI.
like fuck that i mean that'd actually be a really good way to do it right I'd, I'd really enjoy doing it like that but i just feel like i don't even know if they'd let me compete for some fucking reason i feel like this would for some reason they just wouldn't let me do it i, I don't know yeah, yeah that's probably it's probably a cap but you know it's that prize pool now what was the battle pass how does it work? Because in answering these, we can really compare the difference dollars. between Valve and Blizzard's what offerings, fuck, and that really does actually explain a lot for us. So once you That's purchase insane. the battle pass, you start off at level one. It takes a thousand battle points to uh, gain a level on your battle pass. These points are earned through gameplay, but there are also special incentive systems, such as the new Battle Pass's Cavern Crawl system, which is kind of like this little meta game on top of progression. It gives a fuck. Let me look at the, yeah, the, um, uh, Smash Brothers. Smash Prize Pool 2018. I want to look and see how much this is going to be. Uh, Smash Bros for Wii U. Uh, let's see. Prize Pool is, what's 13, wait, the top guy won $8,000? Well, that's it? Oh, well, what about League? Uh, League prize pool, League o largest overall prize pools. Okay, this is easy. Um, Esports earnings, so this is all Dota 2. Then we go into League of Legends, and then Fortnite. Uh, there's $4 million for Fortnite. All of this is Dota 2. Halo 5. Halo 5 Guardians. You know that game that nobody gives a fuck about because Halo is irrelevant and it has been for 10 years? Well, Halo 5 got a $2.5 million prize pool. Uh, that, that Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Uh, Overwatch, $1.7 million. Jesus. Well, where's World of Warcraft? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, World of... Phrase not found. All right, that's that. That's kind of meant to encourage you to try out new champions and experiment okay. a bit. Um, I believe there are also basically like daily and weekly challenges. I don't There's know also a tipping system where you can before. tip. Uh, teammates after a really good match if you enjoy playing with them or they did really well there are also wagers that you can place on your own matches using tokens not 100 percent sure um, how that works and you can also attempt to predict the results of upcoming pro circuit matches earning battle points whenever you make correct predictions so that's pretty cool and there's also that's something great. called the under halo brawl which i believe is another okay. game mode and if memory serves there is quite an extensive integration with the in-game ui that just you know it, it but essentially, you buy in for the season, and it gives you a decent, like, you know, sort of layer of additional stuff on okay, top so of your Okay, so you get bonus Dota stuff experience. for the Battle now, Pass. The Battle Pass costs... Yo, how funny would it be if Blizzard, this is a good idea, I don't even want to say this, Blizzard, don't listen. Turn off the stream if you're listening, Blizzard. What if Blizzard did something like this, and they did a Battle Pass for WoW, where you pay an extra $15 a month, and you get extra drop rates, and there's a higher chance of titan forging and sockets appearing on your armor. Like, yo, how fucking cool would that be, dude? Okay, all right, Blizzard, you guys can listen now. Uh, I just didn't want them to hear that, that's all. It's $9.99, but you can purchase additional levels of the Battle Pass for- It's gonna be called a legendary account. Jesus Christ, that seems so real. <laughs> I could actually see that happening. That's the funniest thing. I could legitimately fucking see them doing that. It's so sad that, like, whenever you see this stuff, you never really know. Yeah, a legendary account. The Titan Forge account. Yeah. It, uh, hey, bro, do you have the War Forge account and the Titan Forge account? We're trying to get, like, remember, like, having early access to the new raids? That'd be such a good idea. Make it, like, a $100, um, a hundred dollar fee for you to be able to go into the raids early. So every fucking neckbeard would have to pay money to go into the raids early. And oh my god, it'd be such a like I tell any man like Blizzard, like this new CFO, whoever the fuck they're hiring with the fifteen million dollar bonus, like they should have hired me with like a one million dollar bonus. I'd make them so much more money, dude. Blizzard, hire me. I'll be your CFO. This is great. I'll scam these fuckers out of money all the time. I do it every day on my stream. I'll just do it on a bigger level. This is great extra money because of course you can now this also does exist on top of the dota 2 pro subscription which okay. came out like just under a year ago okay. and that's priced at three pounds per month okay. uh, but less if you commit for longer and it kind of gives you like a list of challenges and rewards to complete 
which honestly is a little bit strange. But on the whole, it's Valve trying to get subscription-like behavior and deeper player engagement out of their game. A game that's, that's free to play with a very consumer-friendly model that- I love how the fact can- speaking of models, look at that. It's so funny. So Valve basically stole World of Warcraft models. And Blizzard went to the went to the courts to sue them over it, and the courts said, "No, we're going to let Valve keep your fucking models." And and look at this guy here. This is an abomination. It, it is. It, it, it just uh, come on. Let let's be honest here. This is fucking patchwork, with a really big underbite. Unlike Heroes of the Storm and League of Legends gives you all characters for free baseline. Now there are loads of rewards, it's got a cheap entry price, and it does seem like Valve put a lot of development work into it. Now Blizzard first copied a system like this with StarCraft 2. Full disclosure, um, StarCraft 2 just as a pure game is probably my overall favourite Blizz game I would say. I don't really play it as much as WoW though, but um, you know I purchased the war chest. I like the skins, I watch StarCraft 2 eSports regularly. For me, as somebody who loves that game... Wow. I used to actually play StarCraft 2 a lot. I was a fucking god. Alright? Like, the only th the only class I never played or, like, race I never played was Zerg. I just didn't like it. StarCraft 2? Like, I mean, it's not 2010 anymore, so nobody really gives a fuck about it. You know, I was a god, okay? Like, there was one time, like, I just started playing the game, and there was a guy who was in, like, gold or, like, diamond league, and I 1v1'd him, and I fucking won. And I actually never did another 1v1 after that because I was like, listen, I'm already the best at this game. There's no reason for me to ever have to prove myself again. I did that one game. I, I won. I don't remember how. It was like four years ago, right? I, I won the game. It was done. I felt and so good about myself. a lot out of it. It kind of made sense. That said, I've got to be real. It is less robust and not as good as the Valve offering. Yeah. Now, what do StarCraft and Dota have in common? Well, one of them is buy to play. The other one is free to play. On face value, not that much at all. Well, actually, okay. Valve want Dota 2 to be a long-term earner for them. And that means having skins and things like the Battle Pass. Okay. With StarCraft 2, well, once that's been purchased, that's it. Um, but we have seen that's them it. add additional microtransactions and the war chest. And for me, it kind of makes sense with how they run the game because unlike a buy to play game from way back in the day when I was like 12 or 13, where, you know, you buy it and that's that. Well, Star <laughs> yeah, whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to buying a game and then you have the product? Now you buy a game and it's incomplete and they patch it and it's still incomplete because there is day one DLC that you couldn't afford. Starcraft 2 is regularly updated with new maps, new variants on its co-op, and loads of meta changes and things like that. It's not an expensive live service to run, but it is a live service. Um, okay. And I think it's reasonable to There's expect that there is some right there. component of that that earns Battleship. the company money because they are Dangerous. putting work into it and keeping it fresh for their players. And this is what takes us back to WoW, because okay, here we go. after their StarCraft 2 experiment, they seem to be bringing a system like this to World of Warcraft. But here's the problem. Well, how is World of Warcraft different to StarCraft 2 and Dota? I mean, you know, buy to own, and it's also buy to play on a monthly basis. StarCraft's yeah. War Chest and Dota's Battle Pass exists to give those games sustained revenue, but WoW already has that. Okay. So this is asking for a lot more, and that is fine, I guess, and it is totally within their right. But I do think that given the baseline cost of playing World of Warcraft, the players will expect additional offerings to be of a much higher quality and to be more special and all that stuff. So far, though, it just seems like they're giving us some toys. Now, they have not talked about much else, um, and it seems like it's just the same as the charity pet sale, just okay. that some of the money's going into an esports prize pool. If that's the case, the new charity then, is, well, it would have- The new charity is the uh, arena players and the MDI players, because let's be honest, I, can I make that joke? I don't think I can. All right, let's keep going. It's to be extremely cheap, the price of those toys, to have the same overall value proposition per, you know, unit of money spent as, say, StarCraft's thing or Dota's thing. Now, assuming these were maybe $14.99, I mean, man, you'd be getting a hell of a lot less for your, for your money than you would be from Dota or what StarCraft give. And from a mechanical perspective, I mean, there really is nothing to it. In no. StarCraft, yeah. you earn a bunch of stuff as you play matches with the Battle Pass or the, the War Chest. In Dota, you earn a bunch of stuff as you play matches and predict the outcome of games. And, you know, you give and receive tips to other players. You complete meta objectives. And, I mean, look, I am okay. actually very iffy personally on the idea of buying a StarCraft War Chest and then having to unlock the things. Um, that seems I mean, like it's a little it's, bit it's too weird, much. I suppose, in those models. 
Yeah, they've just developed a little bit strangely, but yeah, I, uh, it seems like they're all a lot more. I've never bought a battle pass or any game WoW. before. And basically, if this WoW thing ends up releasing as they have announced it, it seems really low effort, especially since it's a sub game. Now, as for the community response, well, many WoW yep. players who will just see this as another microtransaction. They won't know that it's, you know, similar to an established business model the players have accepted in other games. Yeah, well, people are dumb. Additionally, even, it also follows the most recent Stormout, which was not well received because of it, Good. you know, again, being A, a full purchase and subscription game, and B, being timed terribly. Yeah, you can buy it with gold, but that's just about the most surface level and uncompelling argument that I've heard. That's right. It fucking is, Bellior. You're goddamn right. Anybody that rationalizes store mounts with the fact that you can buy them with gold is a fucking retard. And they don't understand anything. I'll say it right now. And, and there's no there's no asterisk at the end of that. They're just fucking dumb. Like, that's it. They're fucking retards. They don't understand the way that the economy works. They have no idea. They're just fucking morons. That's it. And, uh, you know, that's something I've addressed in the past. At the end of the day, the more you let your principles slip, the more the market is unable to correct for errors and, you know, companies acting badly. And See what he just said. Whenever you let your principles slip, the more the market is unable to correct for errors. Now, I think what he's implying here is that if you make an error, the market, being your player base, will still stick with you if you still have that integrity and that principle. But if you don't have that, obviously it's harder for you to regain that lost trust. So it was actually, it was actually a very, very politically correct way for him to say what I say all the time. That's how they slowly get us over time. It's pretty simple. And then, of course, we've got the Dreadwake, which, uh, you know, again, regardless of personal opinions, it did definitely cause an outrage. And then, of course, there's the pretty manipulative See You Later bundle, which, again, was a bit of a uh, new um, low. So it's the wrong environment. It actually, to yeah, it was a new world, wasn't it? a microtransaction. Wow, and yeah, I never thought of that. If we're to then put on our tinfoil hats somewhat, you could sort of see this as Blizzard priming people for toys to be a regular part of the in game store. Um, on the whole, I think they basically just know there is a segment of WoW players who love their merch and buy all the in game purchases, and they know that those players will just pay more than the industry average for that type. That's right. You go on Twitter. And like all the people that are criticizing, and, and like I do this too, right? And, and like so, all the people that are like criticizing whatever the uh, the store the the store mount thing is, they're like all the highest rated comments. And then people, there's like some, you know, and and she has like Priestess Amanda, and Priestess Amanda has a picture of a night elf in her profile picture on Twitter, and a banner background of you know the Darnassus before it got burned down. And Priestess Amanda is like, wow, I can't wait to spend my boyfriend's money on this. And, y you know, like, whenever I fucking see that, and then Blizzard responds to him, like, those are the types of people Blizzard's marketing to. Let's be honest, that's what it is. And it's fucking frustrating. It really is frustrating. But they have an anime avatar? No, man, it's a WoW avatar because they're, they're playing WoW. Uh, <laughs> those are the types of people, like, Bellyor is right. They're people that buy every fucking thing that Blizzard does of thing because at the end of the day it's wow people are heavily invested yeah so blizzard if you wanted to do this right you would not have announced it this way once more blizzard have shown their inability to think about how they are perceived see here's the wow thing. you can use that's empathy, true you know the ability to sort of place yourself in someone else's shoes that can be used for mercenary empathy? reasons i.e to predict and exploit yes that's a tad evil but man i mean i'm not trying to give them tips but if they actually did that a bit more they might make life easier for themselves now, that's right. You have to use empathy to manipulate and take advantage of people. And Blizzard isn't doing that. Uh, they need to do a much better job at manipulating and taking advantage of people. Uh, the, the fact is that, like, if Blizzard hired me, I can guarantee you that I could make them more money while at the same time um, probably making people happier. Because I'm, I'm really good at scamming people out of money. Like I have a 25 year no I'm I'm what I'm 28 now, I have an over 20 year career in scamming people out of their money. I started at about five years old, and as I've grown up, I've just done it more and more and more. I've used this joke before, but my current scam right now is Twitch Prime, and then also just regular fucking streams. People donate, like look, people donate, and they want me to read their. This is fucking amazing.
Like, think about it, right? Uh, it, it, it's crazy. I, I look at all these sites. This is the way it works. I've been scamming for my whole life. And this is just the most recent iteration. The next level, like, yeah, either Blizzard or Donald Trump has to hire me so I can keep scamming people. It's the only thing in life that I'm good at. I'm not certainly not good at video games. I'm not good at anything else. Really, I'm just good at scamming people. That's the one thing my whole life. This should have been announced as part of a more full system, more than just the toy in a store. This should have had special content and special things that would have came with it. Maybe have a wager uh, prediction system, like with Dota. Maybe put a new room in the cities that has additional, like, meta content. Of course, stuff for the esports fans. That'd be so really cool. So that maybe the or MDI I, I or the, um, the arena stuff could maybe be shown in-game. And maybe there would be just some new parts of the in-game UI for people who, you know, like, bought into that thing so that they could have a deeper engagement in the esports life. You know, maybe something a bit more similar to what Dota are able to do and the value they can sort of create for their players with their battle pass. Yes. But they haven't tried to do that. It just seems to be two things in the store. And basically for me, it just comes down to this. If you're going to sell a product for money, make it a compelling product. Don't, you know, just yeet some low poly count. Uh, did he just, did he just use yeet as a word? A product for money, make it a compelling Listen. product. Don't, you know, just yeet some. Don't, you know, just yeet some low... <gasps> wow. <laughs> and he, he doesn't... He's not... And the, th the thing is, like, he has a script. He wrote yeet on the script. Like, I don't know, I just think it's funny. Holly count uh, toys onto the store and tell people, you know, it's so that their love of Warcraft will be validated yeah. by a larger prize pool in the headline of a Forbes article. Which pretty much seems to be what this is. Okay, let's move on to me and Warcraft. What am I doing in Azeroth? Uh, well, look, here's my thinking. I kind of just okay. wanted, it's a slow week in terms of news. I thought I'd let you know here. Um, we're going from strength to strength at work. We're entering new production with the game stuff in February. Well, that's a good then way to explain new channel what you're doing in WoW. On top you're of not that, playing. I'm developing a new video series for this channel. Okay. So then when we look at WoW, am I excited about season two? Uh, well, once 815 comes out, I know I'm going to do the Brawler's Guild. I actually can't wait for that, and I'm that probably actually going is to do really Zantar exciting. and a Cold Tyran. I'm looking Past forward that, though, to that, too. Even. I might do some of my class mounts and my pending alts, but other than that, maybe the Odd Assault and Darkshore Warfront to keep my main in a semi-okay con uh, condition. Past that, I can't say I'm massively excited about playing Season 2. Now, for me, it is actually more personal because there most of my is. friends have quit, actually, and my old guild is fully dead. Now, I'm actually really excited about what Najatar could bring and I don't want to burn myself out until then. So what I'm going to be do, uh, doing is taking it kind of easy with personal gameplay. At the end of the day, season three is a full reset. It will render all season two progress irrelevant, especially because Azerite is being reworked. So from where I'm standing, there just isn't any reason to play this version of Battle for Azeroth right now, unless I had a guild to raid with or something like that. Um, I mean, hey, it seems like the game's going to be a lot better in May, and maybe we'll go to Nylotha after that, and that seems awesome. So, because of that, I'm actually stepping back it? from WoW gameplay a little bit, and now admittedly for me it was already quite low in BFA, and I'm going to focus that freed up time in making new content for this channel particularly, and especially the future expansion retrospectives, which I'm starting to work on now, plus a new historical series covering the Warcraft universe um, that I'm also working on pretty That's soon sad. now, but it should be a month or two before it starts coming out, um, plus of course more lore at the end of the day i love doing the lore i love researching past expansions and that's going to be how i engage with world of warcraft until the najatar and um, ptr cycle actually comes in really for the most part i actually also don't think the viewers of the channel are that interested in game guides anyway i think they will be once a2 comes out and i think most of us are actually quite excited about a2 because we know it's going to throw the bad parts, well, the worst parts of Azeroth, it's throwing them in the bin. It's going to give us some new progression in the heart of Azeroth, and it yeah, seems like it's going to give us a pretty- I, I feel like being being optimistic about this whole heart of Azeroth progression system is a bad idea. Because you had the artifact system, which was kind of okay, but the way that you got artifact power just forced you into farming Maw of Souls a million fucking times. They finally changed it into Concordance, which, which was just basically an irrelevant feature to just move artifact power into an irrelevant thing that nobody really cares about unless they're a super high-end min-maxing player. Then BFA comes around, they redo the entire system and somehow make it even worse. 
and now for whatever reason people are hyped up about them trying it for the third iteration which they've shown no improvement on like who's to like why would you be excited for something it's like imagine this you go to a restaurant and you order a crab and the guy comes out and it's a roll of toilet paper with a turd on top of it and you're like uh chef this is not what i ordered and he's like, oh, sorry, my bad. And then he takes it back over there, and then he brings it back, and it's just a turd on the plate. No toilet paper. So now you can't even really touch it. You have to go call a waiter, and he has to go take it back to the chef. Now, let me ask you something. After the second time, are you really going to be excited to see what chef is going to bring out on the third plate? <laughs> I'm not. Cool new landmass. I mean, Nazatar looked pretty cool, Mechagon looked pretty cool, and then they teased Nazoth as the patch after that, which again, just you know, in terms of concept, like with Argus, seems pretty cool. It really does seem like Battle for Azeroth, uh, the best we can hope for is BFA to have been a pretty rocky start that in its latter third, maybe latter uh, two fifths or something like that, uh, you know, takes off and has the better quality stuff. Um, which obviously is unfortunate, and uh, that I guess is maybe too hopeful for some of you, but that's basically what I'm thinking, and where I am with World of Warcraft, and how I'm proceeding forward. That's disappointing. Actually, for people who want to watch this channel, and yeah. get World of Warcraft content, like the lore and the documentary stuff, it's good for you, because it means I'm actually putting way more time into that. So, yeah, that's what's up. He's taking anyway, time away from really playing the for, game to make videos about it. Of the news, though, of that course, sucks. if you want more news, there's probably like an hour of content on the other channel, maybe over an hour. We've got a Fallout video that's going and going up today, which also will go and, you know, talk a little bit about... Let's um, look at something. Let's, uh, I want to look at something here, okay? So... Bellior is obviously diversifying his content and uh, making content about other stuff, right? Uh, besides this, like, uh, let's see. Players banned as Bethesda finally addresses the Fallout secret room situation. You know, these videos right here. So he's obviously diversifying his content outside of WoW. Uh, Nixium, look at Nixium. Uh, his hey most guys, recent video. Up, it is Nick that certainly doesn't look like WoW. That looks like that guy's about to wear a tracksuit and get in a, you know, a techno video because he lives in Serbia and there's nothing else for them to do there. Uh, it, you go look at, at Preach. He's playing other games too. Uh, like almost every single WoW content creator is Nobble still making WoW videos? Let me see. Um, it looks like, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, so at least Nobble is still making WoW videos. That's good. But you think about all these other content creators and everything, they're all moving over to just making content ab about, like, other games. And it's not even, like... It's not just on YouTube, like with me on, on Twitch and other people on, on Twitch too. Like, it's kind of sad that it's happening, man. Uh, it, it's frustrating, but I guess that's the way it goes.